My administration is recommending that all Americans, including the young and healthy, work to engage in schooling from home when possible, avoid gathering in groups of more than 10 people, avoid discretionary travel, and avoid eating and drinking at bars, restaurants, and public food courts. London, Paris, and now the U.S. Restrictions are being put in place all over the world to ensure social distancing to slow the spread of the coronavirus. Joining us live again from Washington this morning with more on these measures in the U.S. to contain COVID-19 is CNN's Karen Kaifa. And Karen, we just heard from U.S. President Donald Trump, CDC recommending 50 or less, and uh, Trump uh, upping that ante and saying 10 or less, a very different tone from what we've been hearing weeks prior and now really saying people should take this seriously. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely a change in tone from the president. And he has been getting guidance from top public health officials over the last couple of days that things really needed to change. We understand that the president was slow to kind of come around to the idea of such drastic measures being put in place. He obviously very much has an eye on how this is all going to impact the economy. So the idea of bars and restaurants closing and people not being able to gather and congregate in groups of more than 10 people, that seemed very extreme to him. But over the last 24 or 48 hours prior to that press conference, public health officials were really able to impress upon him just how dire the projections look. They showed him the example of what things have been doing in Italy. You heard the Surgeon General here in the U.S. and other public health officials say that perhaps the U.S. was trending along those lines. So really able to impress upon him the seriousness of the situation. And so he came out yesterday afternoon with these new guidelines, even more drastic and dramatic than what the CDC had said on Sunday night, Melanie. Karen, what a lot of people are concerned about, both here in Canada and across the border, is small businesses, families. Uh, in the long term, will there be uh, enough to be able to help out? Because obviously everyone's going to be taking a hit here. Yeah, absolutely. This will be industries across the board, especially when it comes to small businesses. You've heard a number of state and local officials here in the U.S. when they talk about the closure of bars and restaurants in particular, encouraging people to support those businesses by takeout and delivery and also consider doing things like buying gift cards to help those businesses stay afloat for the short term. But we do know that the economics of this are very much on the minds of those here in Washington. We saw the Federal Reserve here in Washington cut those interest rates to nearly zero. That is an effort to help small businesses when it comes to lending. We've also seen Congress start to think about what the next step may be. They haven't even sent to the president's desk the first of these relief packages that they've been working on. But we know that House Democrats and also those on the Senate side are already thinking about what they will have to do next, both in terms of helping small businesses, Melanie, but also in terms of the larger industries, the airline industry in particular, which is uh, thinking that it's going to need billions of dollars and support after this is all said and done. Karen, on this side of the border, we are expecting daily updates, if not more, from all of our officials here. Do you anticipate anything coming from the U.S. president uh, for an update with health officials on the next steps today? Yeah, the coronavirus task force at the White House has been meeting very regularly, and there has been a full slate of meetings, not only among them, but also business leaders and other uh, state officials meeting with the president and the vice president, mostly via teleconference, but making sure that they stay in contact. We also know that President Trump met with the other G7 leaders yesterday via teleconference to kind of hear about what Europe is doing, of course, what Canada is doing, and also share what the U.S. is doing. So we do expect those regular briefings to keep coming. We know that the mayors of the large cities, New York, L.A., San Francisco, have been also communicating what they are doing, and they are hoping that federal officials stay in touch with them as well. So a lot of communication is going to be key to all of this. Melanie, you've seen it in Canada. We've felt it here in the U.S. just how things have changed, really, since Friday over the last 72 hours. And that requires a lot of coordination. Yeah, it feels as if it changes by the hour. Karen Kafa with CNN, thank you so much, as always, for your time. You bet. It is 634 right now. We're going upstairs to Steph. Morning, Mel. Uh, you know what? This morning we are still looking at a drive that is uh, moving quite well for the most part. Most of our major routes are moving quite nicely. However, we are starting to see a couple of issues here and there. We're hearing of a problem over on the southbound 400, south of Langstaff and the collectors, and actually just getting word that that problem has now cleared away. This problem remains, though. Southbound 400 right to the westbound 401. We have the right shoulder blocked, and that is because of a collision. So now we have some tow trucks uh, currently on the scene, not really adding to the volume, but you can see that traffic is bunching 
cleaning up behind this problem and then easing as it goes by. Eastbound on the Gardner, not a bad drive. However, we are starting to see some delays from east of Jamison to the Spadina ramp, and that is all just volume. Southbound uh, 404 DVP combo, mostly moving well. However, we are looking at some delays building from approaching Lawrence down to Winford. A mortgage with CIBC comes with expert advice and up to $3,000 cash back to help settle into your new place. Conditions apply. That's a look at what we have going on for your drive, and now I'll send things outside to Natasha. All right, Steph, yesterday at this time we were dealing with wind chills anywhere between minus 6 and minus 11. Today it's not as cold, but it is still going to be cold enough that if you have to head out this morning, it's damp, right? And so make sure you've got the gloves and something to cover off your head. We've got that wind as well, uh, upwards of about 15 to 20 kilometers per hour. I know it's not that strong, but it still gives you just a slight bite to the air. Minus 1 is what it feels like out here right now. Yeah, okay, I'm a, a little bit of a wimp. That's what's happening. Uh, I'm a little chilly. I'm also standing outside for like three hours, so that's what's happening. Minus 1 right now is your wind chill. Minus 3 is what it feels like in Hamilton this morning, so good morning to you. And where to play with the kids. Okay, indoors or outdoors. This is just a guide. You can go outside 24-7 if you want to. I don't care. That's fine if your kids love the rain. Friday is kind of the rain day. Thursday morning, we've got some rain. And this morning, between 8 and 10, we've got a round of uh, wet snow and sort of mixed with rain coming through. Other than that, it's going to be nice and dry through the rest of the time where you see the leaves. So there's that little line of snow. I say little, but it's a significant line of snow and rain from Goderich right over to about Col. Collingwood uh, eastward right now. That's sinking down here into the GTA. There's a closer shot of that. That's going to push through again between 8 and 10 o'clock this morning. And after that, we're going to dry out 7 degrees. Watch for the wind. It will be on the gusty side today, upwards of 40 to 50 kilometers per hour. But still, 7 degrees is pretty decent. We should be hitting highs of about 3 degrees for this time of year. So definitely above seasonal. All right, we'll send it back to you, Mel.